This is the UKMT Intermediate Cayley Olympiad paper, so it's for year nines um, if you do extremely well in, in the regular UKMT paper, the intermediate one. Um, the question, this is a bit different, there are only, it's two hours long, which is a long time, there are only six questions, there are ten marks each, it's not multiple choice, someone actually marks all of your work, so you need to make your working look good and award you marks even if you don't get the entire question. It does specifically say, just stating an answer even if it's correct generally earns very few marks. They're looking for you to argue properly and present properly and show how you've got to those answers. I think it's really good because this is how proper math is done as you get to like A-level and well maybe not so much in A-level but as, particularly as you go to university this is how it's going to be done. Um, so it's I guess quite good early prep for that. Anyway let's get straight into it. So four digit number this um, you can break the number up into three pairs of double digit numbers um, and it's asking you find all the four digit numbers which in which all four digits are prime. So okay, let's, let's stop there. Firstly, what digits are we allowed to use? Well, we're not allowed to use four clearly because that's not prime. The the digit single digit primes are two, three, and five, and seven. So we're allowed to use these digits to construct our number. Now we also need all of the pairs of numbers to also be prime. Um, so let's think about how we can do this. Well, two is prime, but it's kind of a special prime, isn't it? It's the only even prime. And the problem is, if I'm trying to make these pairs prime, so this pair and this pair and this pair, I can't put a 2 at the end of any two-digit number and expect that to be prime because 2 is even and anything that ends in a 2 is even, um, so it's not going to be prime anymore. 2 is the only even prime. So although I can use 2, I can only put a 2 here in this section here. I can't put a 2 here because then whatever is here, like a, a 32, is, is clearly not prime. And I can't use it here for the same reason. So if I'm going to use a 2, it can only go here. And actually, for exactly the same reason, if I'm going to use a 5, it can also go only go here. Because any number that ends in a 5 is divisible by 5 and is therefore not prime. So 2 and 5 can only live in this first one. Now 3 and 7, lots of two-digit primes end in 3 and 7. So I think 3 and 7 can live pretty much anywhere they want. So okay, I've got four choices for the first digit and then two choices for all of the other ones in order to make every digit prime and have any hope of making the, all of the pairs also prime. Now the problem is, say I chose a 3 here and a 3 here, and then this double-digit number, 3, 3, well 33 isn't prime and nor is 77, right? So when I'm constructing these numbers, I can't use consecutive threes or consecutive sevens anywhere um, in this section here, or, or indeed at the start, because they're not prime. Uh, three times 11, seven times 11. So I think that's probably enough constraints to just start doing stuff. So let's just, let's just put a two first and then choose a seven and then choose a three and then choose a seven. Of course, alternating these because I've said I can't use consecutive ones. Is this, is this, does this work? Well, all the digits are prime, as we've discussed, it's only using these ones. 27, though, at the front, that's not prime. Um, so that one doesn't work. But if I construct 2, 3, 7, 3, that is prime. Because, uh, well, it's prime, and, well, actually, is it prime? That's not even part of the question, isn't it? I wasn't thinking yet. What I'm trying to say is this works for the question, right? All these digits are prime, 23 is prime, 37 is prime, and 73 is prime. So that actually works perfectly whether or not the number is prime itself, I haven't bothered to look up and I also don't know and the question also doesn't care about, which is kind of interesting. But anyway, um, so that's the twos at the front with alternating three sevens in both ways. Now let's put the five at the front and alternate the three sevens in both ways. Um, well, both of these look good, except only one of them works because 57, sneaky, but it's three times 19. So this isn't prime here, which means this number doesn't fit the bill. Um, so these are the only two things that work so far. Now let's start with a three and then alternate our sevens and threes to so make three, seven, three, seven is going to be the only option. Um, or 7373 if we start with a 7. Um, and actually both of these work because 37 and 73 are both prime, which are the only numbers that actually get created here. And so we have these four um, options and those are the only things that work um, in the in the regards to the question. So cool, quite a good question. Um, question number two. Um, now, if you don't recognize the 345 triangle as being this beautiful right angle triangle, um, then what are you doing taking this test, honestly? Um, but anyway, you're, you're supposed to take a lot of these, these triangles here and tie all them together to make a massive rectangle. Now, it, it, it seems pretty evident that we can't put, when we tie all these or tessellate them, we're going to have to put the diagonals up against each other to make rectangles like this, right? That's, that's going to be the only way to make this work. And we can create this rectangle that's four high and three across, or by starting with the right angle triangle like this, we can make a rectangle that's four across, three up. And so essentially these are going to be the rectangles that we work with and that we're now going to tile with. We're just going to ignore the triangles entirely. 
can we tie all these to make a rectangle of 2016 by 2021 is the question. So okay, let's just try and shove, um, which one did I choose? Let's just try and shove this rectangle into here and try and make it go all the way across. Well, actually, if we if we put three across like this, 2016 does divide by three. I know that because two plus one is nine plus six is 15, which is divisible by three. So this must tile across nicely um, and fit perfectly like this. Now, does four um, neatly tile together to get down to 2021? Well, clearly not, because this is odd. So I can't just tile fours down to make 2021. So what if I just tried anyway? What if I went all the way down, um, but was short by one? Well, then I just have a gap of one at the bottom, and that wouldn't be very helpful to fill in either of these rectangles with. Um, so what if I was short by two? Well, then I'd have a gap of... Um, it, what I'm saying here is that um, this is how many rectangles would be needed to get down there. But if I if I shorten it by two, I'd be five short, right? I'd make 2016, that's just the same tiling as I've got here. Um, I'd make 2016 um, with fours, and then I'd be five short. And again, m being five short isn't very helpful unless I try and put the diagonal up against it, but then you end up with a, a triangle in here, which isn't going to be good. But if I'm short by three of them, um, then I leave a gap of nine, right? The gap between 2021 and 2012 is nine. So I have this space of nine left over, and that is very helpful because then I can start tiling them horizontally like this, um, with height of three, um, and then I'm perfectly in at the 2021. And of course, now I can tile these fours across, um, and I know four goes in 2016 because I worked it out before, um, and, and therefore I'll make this perfect rectangle um, with them horizontally at the bottom here and vertically all the way up and down across here, um, and it should work just like that. Good, question number three. Um, so a geometry question here is saying CD, which is this one and OE, which is this one, are parallel, so I'll put some arrows in there. And also BC and EA are also parallel, so I'll put some uh, arrows in there. It's also saying BCD, which is this angle here, is four times OBC. So if I call OBC X, this is four X, four times that. Okay, so what do we see? We're trying to work out OBC, which is X, which is helpful. So uh, the goal here is just to find X, essentially. Now, in here, we've got a parallelogram because it's got two pairs of parallel sides. So therefore, this side angle is 4x, and these two are, well, we can use co-interior angles, I guess, here to say it's 180 minus 4x and 180 minus 4x. Um, what I said then was, okay, let's just find some more angles. Let's, let's find as many angles as possible. Um, this angle in the corner here is 90. Um, and so if I just look at this triangle here, um, this angle is 180 minus 90, which is 90, minus x. So that angle there is 90 minus x. Okay, so that's kind of helpful. But also I can jump. Well, actually, I'm not sure. Oh, okay, what I did, I think, was I found this angle next. I'll tell you what I was thinking just then. But I found this angle next by saying, well, these angles are on a straight line. So 180 minus this minus that, and just be careful with your brackets, must be this. Um, minus minus makes a plus. So this is a 4x minus 4x plus x, which is a minus 3x. And I get this. Um, this angle here, I did 180 minus this one, because again, it's on a straight line. Minus minus makes a plus, so this is going to be 4x. You could have just said that was alternate with this one, because or corresponding with this one. And then this angle down here, you can just say is corresponding with this one, or you can say in here you've got a triangle that adds up to 180, um, and therefore you can do 180 minus this minus that um, to find that it's 90 minus x, or it's just corresponding to that one. And at this point, I was quite hopeful. I was like, oh, now I can just maybe look at some triangles and add them all up and hope that I solve for x. So I think I looked at this triangle here and I was like 180 plus this one equals this one plus this one plus this one. But unfortunately, all of the x's just cancel and you're left with this. And this is called a tautology. Um, also, you can take away 180 from both sides to get zero equals zero. Um, but it's it's basically just what happens when you just, you just yeah, when this happens. I always, I don't think of it as a tautology. I think of it like this. Um, because I'm cool. So what do you do when you see a tautology like this? Well, what it means, uh, and you can, I, I continued with this, I, you know, I worked out this angle and this angle and this angle and then tried to up add up these triangles and these triangles and do the same thing, but I always ended up with these things. Um, and what it means is that you're missing a key piece of information. You're not working with all the information in the question. So whenever you get here, you need to go back to the question and you need to think, okay, what have I missed? What have I not used? That would be helpful here. Um, so okay, what have we not used? Well, we've used the parallelness of these things. We use that for the alternate and corresponding ones and stuff. We've used this four times thing, obviously. Um, 
We even use the quarter idea because I, I referenced this 90 degrees at some point. The thing that we haven't really used is circle. Like this could be a quarter oval, right? And I wouldn't have really changed any of my method. It's the circle that's really important here that we haven't really taken advantage of at all, right? If this was just quarter of a cricket pitch that was more oval shaped, everything would have just been the same, right? It's the circle that's really important here. Okay, so think to yourself, what do you know about circles? What piece of information does that give you that we've missed? Okay, well, I'm assuming people in your line don't know too much about circle theorems, but the one thing you do know about circles, I would think, is that a circle is a shape in which the distance from the center to the edge is the same everywhere. Imagine you know, drawing a circle with a compass. The compass is the same distance. Sorry, is it a compass? Yeah, it's a compass. It's the same all the way around, right? So you're drawing the same distance from the center where the point is to the edge all the time. So can we see that in here, and would that help us? Yeah, it does, because if this is the center of a circle, and this is the circumference here and here, then that means that this distance, which is a radius, is equal to this distance, which is also a radius. And so this thing, OEA, is an isosceles triangle. And so this angle is equal to this angle. And that's the key um, you know, to this question. And of course, from there, it's very easy to solve. Um, but yeah, when you arrive at a tautology, go back to the question, what have you missed? What piece of information have you need, do you still need to put in the picture somewhere that will actually help you to make progress? That's the key that you need to come up with. Good. Uh, question number four. So a really nice functions question here. Um, so we've got this function. Uh, S of some number is this. And whatever number you put in here cuts this off at some point. Um, so you take the first five terms, if you put five into here, and, and then you do your maths and it's three. Uh, the, probably the best way to start when you look at questions like this is just to do it with a load of different numbers and see if you can spot a pattern. So S of one just cuts it at one, which means you just have one. S of two is one minus two, which is minus one. S of three is one minus two plus three, which is uh, two. S of four is one minus two plus three, which we know is two, minus four, which is minus two. And keep going. Right, and see if you can spot a pattern. And, and hopefully a pattern is pretty evident from those uh, examples there. Um, so let's come up with a conjecture. And the conjecture, I guess, is this, this, this pattern continues. A conjecture, by the way, is a maths word for a hypothesis, which you may have already seen in science. Um, so let's come up with that conjecture there. Now, but of course, let's actually define what the conjecture is. So the conjecture is, okay, what can we actually see here? Well, if we put in odd numbers, one, three, and five, we seem to be getting positives out. And if we put in even numbers, 2, 4, and 6, we seem to be getting negative numbers out. Also, the even numbers just seem to halve the number, 2 to minus 1, 4 to minus 2, 6 to minus 3. The odd numbers don't halve the number, but if we add 1 to the odd number, so this becomes a 2, then halve it, then it does work. So here's my conjecture. And, you know, this might take you a little while to come up with, but that's fine. If n is odd, the answer is positive and it's equal to what happens when you add one to your input and then divide by two. So add one to make four, divide by two, add one to make six, divide by two. If it's even, then the answer is negative and you just halve the number. That's my conjecture. And I think for full marks on this question, you probably have to show why this is true and argue why it's probably always true. And I'm not gonna go too heavy into proper proper proof and proper maths here because this is only a year nine olympiad so let's just do a bit of hand waving which i think would be enough um, for the exam let's take this big sequence now notice the only change i've made to this sequence from here is i've written out a bit longer but i've also just put in some pluses in here i hope we can recognize one plus minus two is the same as one minus two we just don't bother to write the plus here most of the time but i've done it for a very specific reason um, let's deal with the first case n is odd so let's cut this off at an odd number so say seven. Um, and now let's try and argue why this is always going to work. So, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to shove some brackets in uh, here, here, and here. Now, why have I done that? Well, because this here equals one. And so does this here. And so does this here. And so would it always, no matter how far you went along. And because I've cut enough an odd number, you'd always end up with another pair when you went to the next odd, right? Um, so this is just one plus one plus one plus one. Um, and how many ones are there going to be? Well, it's an odd number you start with, so you're going to have an uh, you're going to have these pairs of that create one, and then you're going to have this extra one at the end here um, on its own. So, how many pairs of numbers can you make up to an odd number? Well, you can make half of the odd number 
minus one, but then you've got this last one left over here anyway. So that's where the plus one comes in, right? So this is just describing how many pairs I can create plus the extra leftover one that makes is, is at the start. So I can essentially make half n over two pairs, because of course you just halve the odd number to find how many pairs there are, plus the one leftover is kind of what I'm trying to say. So that's a very hand wavy way of explaining why this uh, result holds. And then the even number is actually slightly easier to, to show. Um, cut it off at some random even number and then group them from the start this time. And of course, when we group them from the start, we just end up with pairs of minus one. And how many pairs do we have? Well, we've just got half of the number we stopped at because we're grouping them in pairs. So we're just going to have n over 2 pairs of minus 1. So the answer is going to be minus n over 2. Okay, so that's my very hand wavy way of showing why these two results are true. And now that I've got the truth of those results, I think I can think about this question here. Um, again, for, for people who are like really good at maths, I understand that those proofs were absolute rubbish, but I think it would be enough to get you the marks in this paper. And I think it's just about as much as you can expect from a um, from a year nine who hasn't seen a huge amount of proof um, uh, before. Okay, so um, now we can deal with this question. So what I decided to do again, just like I did here, is just try stuff. Can I just find something that works here? And of course, just try some low numbers and you find that if you just choose one and one, um, S of one is one, as we've seen, uh, S of one is one, S of one plus one is two, but that equals minus one. And now we get one plus one plus minus one is indeed one. Um, and so this works, right? So maybe you come up with the idea that, okay, if you just choose the same number twice, maybe it, maybe it just works. So let's try two and two. Um, S of two is minus one. S of two is minus one again, but then S of four is minus two. And the problem with this is they're all negative. So when we add them together, we're inevitably going to get a negative number, not a positive one. And that's not just a problem for two and two. That's a problem when if you would pick any even two numbers, because as we've said, any even number gives us a negative number out. And when we add two even numbers together, we still get an even number. And so this is still going to be a negative in, in the end. And so this is just never going to work. So the conclusion I can draw from this is you can't put two even numbers into here. You can't choose A and B to be both even. So what if on the flip side, we choose A and B to be both odd? Let's just try something three and five um, just to get a feel for it. We can just reference the table for this. S of eight, we just need to consume a little bit on, but you'll see this. And then you can just try it and you'll find out that it works. So A and B being both odd seems to be a good idea, but of course we need to prove it, I think, for four marks. So let's just say S of A, let's just choose two odd numbers. Now S of an odd number, we've already decided is this, if A is odd, and S of B is gonna be that, if B is odd. Now S of A plus B, if A and B are odd, A plus B is even. So now we're following this rule. Um, so S of N is negative, so it's gonna be minus A plus B over two. And let's just add this plus this plus this and see what we get. Now they're all over two, so I can just put them on the same numerator. Uh, these A's cancel, these B's cancel, and I get two over two, which is one. And so that's just the answer I was looking for. So if A and B are odd, it works, right? Um, so that's just something we can say now. Um, and that's the algebraic proof there. Good. Now, what about last case, of course? What if one of them is odd and one of them is even? Um, so we can try it with numbers if we want to, um, though I don't know whether how many marks it will earn us, but we can just try it to get a feel for whether or not we expect it to be true. Um, so here's just an example. It, it, it ends up not working, I don't think. Um, I don't know what that's, that's just a copy and pasted slide that didn't, that didn't mean anything. Um, apologies for that. It ends up not working, right? Like this plus this plus this does not equal one. Um, so that didn't work. So let's just show it algebraically then whether, but because, you know, the fact that this doesn't mean, the fact that this doesn't work doesn't mean that it doesn't always work. It could work sometimes, just not for the example I found. So let's do it algebraically. Um, let's choose, it doesn't matter which way around we go, it's going to be the same because it's just going to be a symmetrical idea. Let's choose A to be odd and B to be even. So if A is odd, this is the rule. If B is even, this is the rule, as we discussed. Now A plus B, if A is odd and B is even, A plus B is still odd. So this is following this rule, and this is going to be a plus b plus 1 over 2. And now let's add all of these things together, um, like this. Numerators, denominators are the same, so we can just add the numerators. Um, these a's get put together, these b's cancel, and I get left with this. Divide by 2, we end up with this. And now remember, I wanted this sum here. I wanted it to be 1. So how does this equal 1? Well, it only equals 1 if a is 0. 
but I've already said A needs to be odd. And also, I think this is defined with... I don't think, I don't think you can do S of 0 anyway. Um, so this just doesn't work. Um, and if you went the other way and chose B to be odd and A to be even, and if you've got two hours, you may as well write that case out, it ends up being an entirely symmetrical answer. But it do, essentially, it doesn't work when A is odd and B is even all the other way around. And so it only works if they're both odd. And it always works if they're both odd, as the algebra showed um, that I did before. So yeah, quite an interesting question, quite a difficult one as well, um, but quite quite nice. Question number five then. Uh, this is just algebra. Uh, the only hint I can give you with this is, uh, so to me, the obvious thing to do was to put these fractions together. So I, I cross multiply and put these together and, and get this. And likewise here, this times this, this times this, make the denominator of this. And at this point, I just tried stuff. Um, so I, I initially thought, okay, these are both equal to one, let's set this equal to this, and then cross multiply these out, and I end up with this, and I honestly couldn't see how on earth that would help, so I discarded it and started back here and thought of something else. Um, and what I decided to do, and, and I did it, I, I, I can't lie, I sat here for a while trying other things that also didn't work, and also just sitting here hopelessly wondering what on earth you're supposed to do, until I just tried something that seems kind of random, which is, okay, well, if you're looking for x, y, z, let's just times this one by z everywhere to get an x, y, z, right? Now, that seems like, okay, like the most hopeful and just, you know, ran not random or pointless, but it seems like I'm just pulling straws. Is that the expression? Um, like, it feels like I'm just being very hopeful about how, how well this is going to go. But I just decided to times it all by z um, to make an x, y, z. And likewise, times this by um, p to make a p, q, r, right? Um, and then what I decided to do was rearrange this for x, y, z and rearrange this for p, q, r. So times by p, y, times by q, z, move this to the other side. And what you notice, quite magically, and, and I've written all these in alphabetical order just to make it easier to spot like terms, is that this and this are actually just the same thing, but the other way around. So P, Q, Z, P, Q, Z, P, Y, Z, P, Y, Z. So this here is equal to this as a negative, because if I just times this by minus one, I would swap these over, which would be this. And of course, now I can just add X, Y, Z to both sides. I end up with exactly what they wanted. Um, so I can't give any more advice on this question other than don't give up on these questions. Just try stuff. Even if, even if it doesn't seem like at this point you are going to achieve anything at all, you were just being very hopeful. Um, just try it anyway. You've got lots of time. It's going to be some algebraic trick somewhere. It's not going to be obvious. You, it's probably not going to be something you've seen before. Just try stuff. Hopefully it will work out eventually. And, uh, and yeah, that's all I can really say about that question. Question number six. Uh, so traffic light question. So he's, he's going past a load of traffic lights, N of them in fact. And he noticed two consecutive lights were never the same color. And it's asking us if there were at least two red lights somewhere in the journey, which we'll talk about later, find the number of possible sequences of color that he could have seen in this journey. So, okay, let's talk about the first traffic light. How many choices of color are there for this? Well, there are three, right? Red, um, amber, and green, or yellow and green, whatever you want to call it. Now, the next light has three colors on it, but it can't be any of those three because he never goes through consecutive lights of the same color. So assuming he went through maybe green on this first one, he couldn't go through green on the second one. So the second one can only be two choices. And likewise here, whatever he went through, whether it was amber or red, he can only go through the two others that he didn't go through here, here. So again, he's got two choices. And likewise, that logic continues all the way down to the end um, where you've got another two here. So, okay, to work out how many possible combinations there are here, we just do 3 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, all the way down to here. And how many 2s are there here? Well, if there are n traffic lights, and one of them is has got 3 choices, there are n minus 1 with 2 choices. And so, well, okay, if you had 5 2s multiplying here, that would be 2 to the power 5. So if you've got n minus 1 of them, it's 2 to the power n minus 1. So that's the total number of traffic lights that he could have, or possible sequences that he could have gone through. Except the question says he saw at least two red lights. And one of these sequences that we just counted just goes green, amber, green, amber, green, amber, green, amber, green, amber, and so on. So that's not a possible combination, right? Because he saw at least two red lights. So the logical thing to do here 
is to take the total number of choices possible and simply remove the number of sequences that um, only have zero reds or one red. Right. So at least two, the fact that he went through at least two means that he didn't go through zero or one. So let's remove any sequences that only have zero or one red in them. Okay, so let's start by removing the zero reds. So this is the total. Um, to go through zero reds, you either went through that sequence or that sequence. You either went green, amber, green, amber, green, amber, or amber, green, amber, green, amber, green. And that's only two sequences. Those are the only two possible sequences you could have gone through to have not gone through any reds at all. So let's just take away those two sequences from the total. Okay. And now we need to talk about how many sequences there are with run one red. And we're going to find out how many there are and remove it in the same way we did with this. So how many have one red? Well, let's say you have n lights. Firstly, you have n places to put whatever, put the red that you want. So you could put it here or here or here or here. You're just going to put the red somewhere. And then we're going to discuss, okay, how many ways are there to make a sequence out of this? Well, the first traffic light, you can be either green or amber, right? You can't be red because you've chosen to put the red here, apparently. So there are only two choices for this traffic light. Now, there's only one choice for this one, because if you chose green here, you would have to have amber here because you can't have red and you can't have green because it can't be consecutive and red is only here. So there's only one choice there. Now, after the red, you can actually be either green or amber again because it doesn't care what was back here. It's not going to be consecutive with the red because there's only one red. So there are two choices there. And then likewise, the logic continues. One choice, one choice, one choice, right? If you chose green here, you can only have amber here because you can't have green because it can't be consecutive and you can't have red because there's only one red. Um, so there's just going to be one choice forever. So how many choices are there here? Well, there's two times two, which is four, times the n places that you could have put this red to start with. Um, so that means there are four n combinations for this, right? Or are there? Because I put a question mark here. And the question mark is here because the fact that this R was here may be meaningful because it meant there was a two choice earlier and a two choice later. So what happens hypothetically if you end up, because remember, I was choosing to put the um, red anywhere I wanted. What happens if it goes at the front? There are only two choices for this traffic light because it can only be green or amber, can't be red. And then there's only one choice for this one because it can't be the one that you chose here. And likewise, only one here and one here and one here. So actually, if you put the red at the start, there's only two um, N combinations. There's the N combinations to put the red and then the two here. But this is also wrong because this this only applies if you put the red at the start or if you put the red at the end. So actually we need to segregate the two con the the two the two ideas. We need to consider what happens if we put our in the middle traffic lights such that there's a two in front of it and a two behind it and then what happens if we put there at the front or the end. Okay? So let's do this uh, in fact that's doing that again. So okay. There are n minus 2 because there are n traffic lights and we're not considering the front or the end. n minus two places to put the R if we want a two before it and a two after it somewhere. And that's going to give us four, two times two. The R isn't a choice. That's not R choices. That's just this is red. It's the one choice of red. So so it's, it's two times two times all these ones, which is just four, times n minus two combinations. And then we say, okay, now we're going to put the n, sorry, now we're going to put the red at the front or the end. There are only two places, the front or the end. Um, and then we're just going to end up with the two after it with a bunch of ones. And likewise, if you put the R at the end, it's going to be two at the start, a bunch of ones, and then the R at the end. So that's still going to be two, lots of two, right? There are only two places you could put the R times the two from the two times one times one times one gives you four combinations. So what we're going to do is remove this and remove that from the total. I don't know how well I explained that, but hopefully if you watch it again, maybe um, you can cover it. But this is going to be the answer. It's the total number minus the number of sequences that have no reds minus the number of sequences that have one red. This one representing the red coming in the middle somewhere and this representing the red coming at the start or the end. Um, so, okay, and it says simplified form, so we just got to do some very simple algebra here. Expand out these brackets, make sure you get the negative correct. Uh, minus 2 plus 8 is 6, minus 4 is 2, and we have our answer just there. And that is the uh, entire Olympiad done. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.